I've been making pinwheel cards in all different sizes. Want to see? Come on in. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Senior Suzy Stamps. This is Julia Laird, and today I am doing some pinwheel cards in different varieties. And the reason I started making pinwheels is because I had... Um, a friend asked me to do a little class for them for their women's group and um, I polled a couple of Facebook groups to see what kind of cards they thought would be easy for a group of um, ladies for a women's group and the large um, response was pinwheel cards well you know, I come late to the party sometimes, and honestly, I don't think I'd ever made a pinwheel card, so I got started. So when I was doing my little pinwheels, what I discovered was I was a little challenged on getting my pinwheels put together right, so I made a template. You know me and my templates. And honestly, this has been um, such a help to me to get the little pinwheels um, no matter what size they are, to get the little pinwheels lined out straight um, so that all the little corners match. So all I did was to take a square piece of paper and when you make yours, if you will, make sure that you do even inch size, like six inches or eight inches square. It just makes the process a little bit easier. And then you draw your line from corner to corner this way and then you take your halfway mark and draw your line this way it's four lines it's simple to make just make yourself a little pinwheel template now today we're going to make two cards uh, one is going to be a mini slim line similar to this one and the other one is going to be a little square card and um, now you know in my studio there's a few little rules not many <laughs> Because I'm not a big real person in the studio. But the one thing I do like to do is to use up my scraps first. I went ahead and made my base out of these little scraps. My friend Peggy and I sometimes share paper packs. And um, this is one that she got for me. I don't know where it came from. It looks like it might be um, a Michaels uh, paper pack. I don't know for sure. Anyway, let's get started. So... This particular card is four and a quarter inches square. And then um, the piece that I have working here just for the top layer is three and a half with a little uh, three and a quarter inch black base. So I decided I would use black as my first layer for the pinwheel. And I think it'll show up pretty well on the camera the way I do this. And I line the corners up so that each one fits exactly on one of these little lines here. And then I'll put my little um, dot of art glitter glue in the middle. And I might put a little magnet on there to kind of hold it for me in line. And then the other one, you put the, uh, the corners on the other four lines and line it up. Just take your time. That glue gives you a minute to do that. There you go. See, they're all four lined up then. And that makes these little triangles in the perfect relationship to each other by doing it that way. So that's the first layer. Oh, now for this size card, I used uh, the first layer is two and three eighths. And then these will be two and one quarter. And then I punched with my little square one inch punch. I punched some one inch squares um, on that uh, card so it would be a little easier. So now all I'll have to do is go ahead and glue these on. It doesn't take but a minute to do. These are easy cards to make. They're fun. And I usually start mine on the piece that doesn't have the... And then I'll turn the other one. I have um, been blacking the edges of these with my 
broad tip black sharpie uh, pen and I think it makes them kind of stand out a little bit more on the card face there and uh, all you have to do is set them down to where they're all even that way and see how that little line it just adds a little something to the project um, on there now these are little squares that I'm going to use and there's two different sides and they're subtly different so I thought that would make a nice uh, change on this card and you know on the first one you just drop a line of glue on and then when you put it down you put it on the side that you're traveling towards so I'm going to put it on I put that glue side here and I'm coming this way with my um, little squares and then you can put glue on the whole square as you travel forward until you get to that last square and then you can pick up now on these smaller pinwheels you have to kind of watch for a little overlap going on there it does happen and if it does, I'll just trim that little corner off because I have a center treatment that I'm going to put on there. And I don't want a big old hump up there in the corner. Sometimes if you get it just right, they don't, uh, they don't hump up, but other times they will. Some of these cards make really pretty little quilt cards um, by using that space in the center there as just part of the design. So kind of be adventuresome with your scraps because that's all these are, is little small scraps of paper. And uh, it's just another way to use up every little inch of paper that you possibly can. There we go. Got two more to do. Now I just left a little small border around the outside of these. You could leave a larger border if you wanted to. So then I'm going to pick up. So I'm going to pick this little side up and that's why we didn't glue it down. And then I'm turn it this way. There. And that's my little pinwheel. Now I thought it might be fun to take this over and put some dots on it to emboss it. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, now I've got this embossing done. Hope you can see that. It just adds a little dimension to it. And then I'm going to put this on the card with the fold up, right like that. I'm going to glue it down, and then I'm going to put a little weight on top of it to let it dry and flatten out some. Sometimes when you have layered up things like this that you emboss, they get a little wonky on you. Okay, now I'm going to bring this little pinwheel back and line up my corners here with it because it's a square card it should line up and then I'm going to shoot for lining up these points as best I can with an equal distance off the side there and that way your card is lined up well I, sometimes I don't see quite as well as I'd like to until the glue dries and then I can see it <laughs> How about you? Do you ever do that in your studio? I do, for sure. Oh my. Okay, let's do, leave, leave that one for just a second to dry. And then I'm going to come back and put the little embellishments on it that I've got made. And we'll move on to the second card that I've got. This little birthday card was the one that seemed to pique the most interest on the Facebook pages that I... Um, posted all these cards on to see which one they liked the best so I went ahead and made one similar to this today 
and let's get started with that. This is just your basic mini slim line. It's six and a half by six and a quarter, scored at three and a quarter. So this first sheet that I'm going to put on is six by three. And I'm gonna make this just simple and quick because the pinwheel really is the star of this show. And uh, the pattern paper plays well together because I got it all out of the same pack. This paper came from um, paperwishes.com. I am not sure that it is still available. It's called um, double-sided hopscotch paper. And I have several packs of it, and I just really love this paper and will be sad to see it um, leave the studio, but it's not doing any good in the studio. Not going out to visit people, is it? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this little strip down. It's just a little straight strip embellishment out of a scrap that was left. And I think I'm just gonna put that right in the middle using my grid lines for my gauge. There are also some little tiny dots on this paper and I wanna make sure that my dots kinda of line up well. And there, so that card base is ready. I'm gonna put this little strip on the inside. I always try to put a little something something on the inside of the card as well um, because invariably I've got a little something something left <laughs> and uh, I think it just helps to add a little something to the inside of the card. Now on this one I'm going to use a white base and they are two and an eighth so by the time you get that on the diagonal like that, it'll take up pretty much this whole space. So let's get started and glue them down. Again, I'm gonna set them right on my corners so that they're right on those lines. Put me a little magnet there to hold it. Start my little glue process. and then come on in with my other piece. And I'm looking here, here, and here, and this one should follow automatically. So there we go. There's the starting point right there. Easy peasy. And then I'm gonna use this little blue, and these are two inch squares, and I just happen to have this little piece of blue left that was two by four and a quarter, so that's what got used. I like little polka dot papers. I think they're pretty. And you'll notice now, I didn't black the edges on this one. But I may go around around the outside border Okay, so this is what I'm going to use here now. Now there are, let's see, I need to separate these out because I cut this out of uh, a little scrap piece that was left over. I was going to use my punch on these as well. However, the scrap that I had was exactly four inches by two inches, so I just put it on the... Um, my little guillotine cutter and cut it that way and it worked out pretty well so i think i'm going to put this little scallop edge on the outside like so so i'm going to glue my little scalloped edge and start there and then move that way keeping that little tiny narrow border. And I'm gonna alternate it with the red. Red's one of my favorite colors. And I like this red and blue combination. Now on this little stripe piece, instead of 
making it like this. I'm going to keep rotating that all the way around. I think that look kind of adds to the pinwheel effect of the card. But a lot of people like it to come straight across. But I kind of like to keep turning it so that it's perpendicular to the one that I had before. Now, on this one here, you can see what I was meaning about uh, bulking up in the middle here. And I don't want to do that. So I'll show you what I'll do here in a second with the last four pieces. I'll put the first four down. And then I'm just going to trim off a little corner on the rest of them. Right like that. And that'll kind of keep that bulk uh, down in the center there. Okay. Now we keep building our little pinwheel. I can't remember if I planned anything to go in the middle of this one. I think I did, but I can't remember for sure. Oh, I think that may be what that piece is there for. These are easy to do. I have to remember that this one has to pull up, so I'm going to slip that down under. And then this final one goes under it as well. Like that. There. And then we're going to put a little drop of glue up in there. That was probably a little too much. I don't really want it sloshing out there. <laughs> there. And what I'll probably do is kind of off-center this a little bit. And I'm going to put the point from here on this line and the point over here on that line and it kind of helps uh, draw your eye around that way and I'm going to shorten up this little happy birthday let me get my cutter out hang on I'll make that a little shorter on both sides just for a little extra interest on this card I'm going to go ahead and black the edges of the sentiment and the outside edge of that pinwheel and this is the way I do it it just takes a little second to do and it really helps the dimension on these cards without adding a lot of bulk to them because these pinwheels are kind of thick as it is there point there and one point there and then I'm gonna wipe that down stay there <laughs> oh me okay and I'm just gonna put this little sentiment on flat right down here in this corner with an even, even border all the way around it. Kind of paying attention to those little lines if I can. Rub that little extra bit of glue off. Let me set this over here for just a second because I want to add a few little hearts to that and I'm gonna use this little heart punch um, from Stampin' Up! It's a border punch, but it punches 
great little small hearts out. And um, that's what I use it for more than a border punch. I like using punches. Um, and I think I'm going to use a little three-quarter circle out of this. And maybe use that sign to do the center on that. I'm going to add a little black to that. Just adding this black to your center kind of adds a little more dimension. You have to look at it extra close to see if it's on top or if the insides are kind of cut off. <laughs> okay. Do we like that or do we like that? Oh, I think I like the red better. Yep. I told you I'm kind of a little red paper girl. <laughs> See if we can get that kind of right in the middle. There we go. Now I need to get my little gizmo wizzy here. Let's see if we like some hearts on that. Yep, I think I do. So here we are. And that little card's done. So you can use your little pinwheel with your mini slim line. Oh, I think I'll put these little hearts on the inside too. That's why I cut more. I forgot about it. <laughs> you know, when you're placing three, if you'll place your two outsides first, then you can kind of find the center easier that way. Otherwise, if you're doing outside and then center and then the other outside, it's kind of hard to get them lined up for some reason. I don't know why that is, but I have found that to be the case many, many times. All right, so I don't know what I'm going to put. Oh, I have a little stamp here, which I forgot. Hope your day is the sweetest ever. Isn't that nice? My allergies are kicking up and my voice is kind of going out on me. So, I'm glad that we were able to get as far along as we have. Let's go back and finish this other card now. Because I'm not quite sure um, whether to use this little ribbon or not. But I think it might kind of make it special. I'm going to put this, this little embellishment that I made. This is a uh, star-shaped punch and then I use this three-quarter inch punch and then this is just a little jewel that I got um, from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to put a little piece of foam underneath that and lift it up just for some extra dimension on this. I'm thinking it'd be pretty and I might be able to snuggle that uh, bow right up in there. I'm going to line these dots up going straight up and down. There, and then I made this little bow. It's actually two ribbons. There's a little slim ribbon and then this polka dot one. That's kind of a nice card just the way it is without the bow. I'm leaving it off. I'll leave that for something else. So I do have a little strip to go on the inside of this card. And then I also made a little small embellishment that mirrors the outside of the card for the inside of this. And I've used it on several of them. But it's just a little uh, double square there. And I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. Kind of put it point to here and point to there. And 
And that way it's not squared up at all. Hand hmm. our little note there. That's good to go. All right. Well, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, put those in the comments. I'll be putting the template over on our Facebook page, so you can go over and look for that if you want to. Um, but it's easy to make. You don't really need a copy of this one. Um, anyway, I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.